In this video, we are going to use Octave to obtain numerical solutions for our dynamic equations. In the previous videos, we were looking into equations of this type and solving them analytically to find the expression for x as function of time. With those expressions, we used Octave to change some values and see them graphically. Sometimes it's common that because of the system itself or the type of force that we are using, it's very difficult or even impossible to find these analytical solutions. Therefore, we must try to solve them numerically, which is uh, an approximation of this solution, uh, to obtain any information about the system. In order to do that, we are going to use an ODE, or Ordinary Differential Equation, solver which is built into MATLAB or Octave. Specifically, we're going to use the ODE45 function. In MATLAB, this function is available by default. In Octave, you might need to install or load the ODE package. If you are into Octave, you can go into your command list and type pkg list to see what are the packages you have installed. In my case, you see that ODE package is marked as loaded. These are all installed, but this only this one is loaded. If your uh, ODE package is not loaded, you can type package list, uh, sorry, package load, and the name of the package. So, for example, ODE package. If you go and hit enter, it will load the package and you can check again on the package list if it has a mark meaning it's loaded or not. So remember, this is only necessary for Octave. In order to use this ODE45 function, we need to write our dynamical equation into what we call state space form. The first step to do that is to define state variables. And state variables that can be uh, in many types, but it's very common for the mechanical systems for us to use state variables as displacement and velocity. So in this case, with a equation like this for a mechanical system, we can define our first state variable as being the displacement and the second state variable as being the velocity. The second step is for us to define the state equations. And these are equations that define the rate of change of the state variables. So we're going to get each state variable and get an equation for what is the derivative of it over time. And if we look at our definitions, the uh, the French of y1 over time, which is, we are defining here as a dot, is simply the second state variable. This comes from our definition here. And the second state equation, which gives the uh, rate of change of the second state variable, we can get from our main equation over here by isolating our acceleration as our state variable, our second state variable is the velocity, its derivative is the acceleration. So our state equations are given by these two expressions here. And these expressions here that we are going to use in MATLAB or Octave in order to use the ODE45 function. So I have a file here in my Octave in which I have these exact same state equations here in lines 8 and 9. So I'm calling my uh, first equation as dy1 and it's given by the second state variable and the state equation for the second variable is given by this expression here which is precisely what we wrote here. So we have the damping coefficient times the velocity which is the second state variable the stiffness times the displacement, which is the first state variable. We have some force being applied to the system and we have all that divided by the mass. So these two lines here uh, gives us our 
state equations. We need to put these uh, results, uh, we need to make sure that these results are a column vector. So that's why we have this line 7 here. We pre-allocate a vector uh, forcing it to be a column vector by using the zeros function. And as we need all these parameters m, c and k uh, for, our for our equations, we need to define them here at some point. I'm using the same values we had before in the previous videos. Now this function here, the function that holds our state equations, they need to be in this exact format so the function ODE45 can understand it. We need a name for it. It's common for us to just give a common name like ODE function. And it has to receive as inputs time and a vector of state variables in this precise order. And it will give to us as a result also a vector giving us the values of these state equations or the uh, derivative of each state variable. So this function here it has to be in this exact format. If it's not, OD45 will not recognize it as a valid function. There's one more step here that we need to define this force which I'm putting it in a generic form here in our equation. And for that I put a second function in the same file to define for us the value of this function at each time. And that's our very well-known um, harmonic function which, which needs an amplitude and a frequency. And as long as we have the value at each time it will give us a specific value for this force regarding each time. So as well, uh, again we need the amplitude and the frequency values inside this function. So we need to define them somewhere here before we use this expression. So I'm using these values here. So this gives us this function, this ODE function, which we are going to use for uh, having the numerical solution using another function that will be the solver, the ODE solver. This means that we are going to use this ODE function at another file uh, which we usually call the main file or the um, analysis file which I have here uh, as called Dynamics 9. So let's first look at this line 9 here of my file I'm using the ODE45 function here to get the solution of our state equations. And this ODE45 function needs three inputs. The name of the function that holds our state equations. So it's this file here that has this function ODE fun. So that's what I'm inputting here with this at sign. ODE45 also needs the time of interest, so the beginning and end of our time span. And ODE45 also needs the initial conditions for all our state variables. So in order to use ODE45 we need these three things. We already have this file or this function that holds our state equations. So we need to define our time uh, span, which I'm defining here in line 3. So I'm saying that I'm interested in what is happening to the system between time 0 and 10 seconds. And I'm um, indicating to ODE45 that I want uh, this numerical solution at each interval of this value that I'm putting here in this uh, vector construction. The initial conditions I am inputting as another vector here which holds one value for initial condition of each state variable. So remember we have two state variables y1 and y2 so I need two values here as initial conditions for them. 
and I'm just saying that my system starts at rest, zero displacement and zero velocity. Now we can use ODE45 with these three uh, inputs, we have all of them defined here. And the output of ODE45 is a time vector and a state matrix, which gives us the value of the state variables at each uh, at the respective times that we have in this vector. So we can plot these results, we can plot for example the state variables over time and we'll see that this state matrix holds two columns. In our case the first column gives us displacement, the second column gives us velocity. So I'll just go ahead and run this file. Remember that we have these two files in order to work with ODA45, but the only file we run is this, what we're calling the main file. So I'm going to run it, and we can see the result, which is the oscillation of our system with an harmonic force uh, being uh, input directly to the body. So as we gave initial conditions of zero to the displacement and velocity, our system starts here. And as the force keeps oscillating, the system will go uh, and follow this uh, this force, this harmonic force, and give us some response like this. So this is the displacement in blue, and this is the velocity in green. So this numerical solution needs to match the analytical solution that we had before for this same system. So it's a nice check that you can do to put the same parameters, both for the system and for the force, and see if these two curves match. Once you have these two results matching, you know that you have uh, a valid uh, file, a valid construction for a very simple system, and you can build on from there. So for example, you can go back to your system and say, I don't want an harmonic force anymore, I want any other type of force. So let's see another simple example that we need, a, that we have a constant force, F0 and we can see what is the result or what is the response for our system for such a type of force. So we see that our system starts again from zero because we gave the initial conditions as so. And as the force stays at a constant value our displacement will go up, oscillate around an equilibrium value and then stay on it. And the velocity will oscillate around and also reach an equilibrium value of zero. So you can go and play with this ODE function in order to see other types of forces that you can put in your system and also any other system uh, that you can write in here. In order, just remember that you need to have your system written in space equations, state space equations. So you need to define state variables and state equations for that.